This Kitchen Nightmares episode is so intense, it broke Gordon Ramsay. You stuck up precious little bitch. Leave me all you want. You are so in denial. You need therapy. You're calling me a fucking arsehole. Wake up and admit it's shit. Hello you beautiful people, today we will be diving deep into the most intense Kitchen Nightmares episode I've ever watched. If you've never seen Kitchen Nightmares, don't stress because he has a quick rundown of the show. Gordon Ramsay spends a week with struggling restaurants across America to try and make them successful. Sounds fairly tame so far, right? Well, it's not as easy as that because these episodes are insane as most of the restaurant owners he deals with are absolute maniacs. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at the one Gordon named the very worst. You're going to see why this episode was too much for Gordon, if he was actually successful in turning them around, and at the end we'll have a look if the restaurant is still a thing today or if it went bust. Let's do this. The restaurant in question today is a place called Down City, which is owned by both Rico and Abby. Rico's like the nice guy, easy to get along with, and Abby is a, uh, how do you uh, say this in a, a nice way? Uh, a lunatic. A raging lunatic. I don't like to make assumptions based strictly off just appearance, but everything about her tells me she should be called Karen. She's got the glasses, she's got the haircut, even like facial features, and also the big one, the personality. I've been in the restaurant business for 33 years, so the decisions I make, I really don't consult me about them, I just do them. <laughs> Great. That's a nice positive side of a healthy business partnership. Yeah, I don't uh, consult with the other 50% owner because... Uh, uh, would I make a wrong decision? I don't think so. Look at me. I'm perfect. We learn very early on that Rico has put like his entire life savings into this restaurant and if it fails he's going to be bankrupt and his entire life is going to be ruined. And he's basically left it all down to Abby to make it work and Abby has no clue why the restaurant is failing. I think it's a beautiful restaurant. I think our menu is creative and the food is good. Yeah, whoever's meal that was also thought the food was perfect. They've devoured whatever that was supposed to be. There's nothing left on that plate at all. Christ, how much sweet corn do you want to give them, like? Not even the green giant has that much. We then meet some of the waiting staff who give us the real reason why the restaurant is failing. Abby has her blindfolds on because she doesn't want to admit that she's part of the problem. Abby acts like... Whatever, don't argue. Corella DeVille. She's always bloody trying to catch those Dalmatians, our Abby. Abby, man, you've got to work. Leave the dogs alone, you little dog nonce. Abby is a complete psycho fucking bitch. Okay! Right! This seems like a nice healthy place to work. Does he know he's being filmed? Does he know Abby's gonna watch this and potentially sack him? Yes, yeah, so my boss is actually uh, a bitch. Um, uh, a psycho ass bitch. I wonder if my editor Tom would say the same thing. He wouldn't say that. And I think a big reason why some of the staff hate Abby is because she just doesn't value them. They think that this is a democracy and it's not. If you cannot follow my rules, then get the fuck out. As long as you work for me, you do it my way. Enough said. All right, Kim Jong-un. Are you starving them as well? This woman isn't a manager. This woman is a bloody dictator. Colonel Abby over here. Christ, she's gonna hide in a bunker soon. If it was up to her, we'd all be walking around with her hair cut. This woman has went mad with power. Mad. To be fair, this is actually how I used to act when I started a handstand game in primary school. When those legs aren't vertical at all. Get out! Get away! Don't wanna hear it! And I think it's very clear early on that Abby's ego is like outrageous. Like if anyone has an opinion which is different to hers, she doesn't want to hear it. Even if it comes from the customers. There's no consistency. It's just like That's how the plate is prepared. Do you not like it? No. Do you know if everyone's telling you that your food is terrible? Maybe it's not that great. I don't know. Just an assumption. You know if everyone was saying to me, calm, your teeth are terrible. They're awful. Change them. Then I would think, hmm, maybe I need to. But I wouldn't because nobody ever mentions that. <laughs> you know the people I always feel sorry for in Kitchen Nightmares or these kind of shows in general is the waiting staff. Not only do they get the crap from the customer thinking it's their fault that the food is terrible, when they take that information back to Abby or back to the kitchen staff, they also get shouted at by them. It's like, it's, it's not my fault, don't shoot the messenger. I can't imagine what it's like to work at a restaurant where you know the food is terrible and you know that when you take this food out to somebody, they're going to hate it. Nobody can say anything about the menu because it's her menu. She she takes it personally. Maybe they're not the right decisions, but they're my decisions. What kind of a 
of defence is that? Can you imagine trying to pull that Uno reverse card out in court? I might have killed him. Okay, it might have been the wrong decision, but it was my decision. So, don't worry, I'll just let myself on bail. Charges drop. I have to get Abby on board to move forward because... My life is at stake. Sorry, what? Is Rico being blackmailed for his life here? You don't need Gordon Ramsay, my friend. You need the police. We then learn that the reason why Rico's whole life will come crashing down if the restaurant fails is because he's actually a financial advisor through the day. If something happened here where I had to declare bankruptcy, it could very strongly affect my day job. Which is very odd to me because his financial decision was to invest in this restaurant, which is going to make him bankrupt. Like, why would you follow this guy's advice? Like, if the restaurant fails, surely then you can't give people financial advisory. That's like me being a full-time nail tech advisor through the day, whilst my own fingernails, which I'm not going to show you, look like micro chodes. They genuinely look like I've been in the bath for about four years. They look like little prunes. The show then cuts to the next morning where Gordon meets Abby for the first time. Hello, Hello. Chef Ramsay. How are you? Welcome to Down City. Nice to meet you. Likewise. My pleasure. And your first name is? Abby. Abby, good to see you. And on a scale of one to ten, mark the food. What would you say? Where are we? It's a ten. A you see a ten? Really? Like out of a hundred, possibly? Love, I saw how that chicken was cooked. It was still bloody bacocky and not bacocky. That's a completely different thing. Well, maybe they do. We don't know what chickens are into. And the rest of their encounter is even more awkward. I'm starving because the room service next door was shocking. What do you mean it was shocking? Uh, I, there's a little hotel next door, a little boutique hotel. Do the room service for that hotel. What was the problem? Oh. That's not a great start, is it? If I was Gordon, I would just leave now. Honestly? Yeah. That was embarrassing. Why? Why? What did you have? Crab cakes that were stone cold in the center. It was just like this ball of mush. Disgusting. 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 Whoa. <laughs> you can tell the waiter has been waiting his entire life to say this, but he can't because he knows he'll get sacked. But what's even better is somebody else has said it, and he's got a front row ticket. Oh, I bet that must feel so nice inside for him. That's impossible. That's impossible with a crab cake stone cold. You're telling me I'm exaggerating? I think you're one of those customers that I would fire immediately, yeah. You fire customers? I have. How do you fire a customer? Hey, I don't like you. You're fired. I, I literally, I don't work here. I don't care. Pack your stuff and don't come come back in the morning. All right, all right. Can I suggest something? I don't want you to suggest anything, because if you're okay. now telling me that that room service was you at your best, I'm shitting myself before I start eating. Judging by the food that we've saw, Gordon, you will be shitting yourself after you've eaten as well. I can't wait to see him try this food. So as you can probably see from this initial uh, altercation between Abby and Gordon, Abby is going to make this one hell of an episode. But I never understand the owners on these shows, because like, why would you invite Gordon to come to your restaurant to help save it, and then when he comes, and starts like speaking facts, you start like telling them he's full of shit. Like why? It doesn't make any sense. You wanted him to come and roast it. He hasn't just opened your door on the street and went, by the way, your soup looks like piss. If he did that, maybe you've got a fair point. It's now time for Gordon to order the food that he wants to try. And honestly, I am worried for him and for his bowels. Describe the food for me. Um, comfort food, middle of the road. Middle of the road? When was the last time somebody sent food back? <laughs> today. <laughs> oh, today? Then... Oh, you did? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Can you imagine sitting in a restaurant ready to eat food and then Gordon Ramsay walks in with a camera crew? My heart would drop. The only way you would be able to get me back up is with a defibrillator. Defibrillator? Defibrillator. That's so hard to say with a modest lisp. Just knowing that whatever is rolling around your belly is not going to look pretty when it comes out the other end. Like, look at this guy in the back. He knows today was a day full of bad decisions. Look at his face. He's like, fuck. He knows that he's gonna have to ring up work in about 30 minutes telling them today is a day off because he stomachs in bits. <laughs> Could I suggest something or no? You don't uh, want my suggestion? If you're gonna talk to me honestly, fine. If you're gonna start, you know, going defensive. I'm not gonna get defensive. I'm just defending what we do here. I'm not going to get defensive. I'm just defending what we do here. Kind of sounds a bit defensive to me. Gordon and Abby then have a row and Abby calls him again full of shit. At this point, I'm thinking, how much shit can Gordon be full of? By the way, this, this man has not even ordered any food yet, so I guess we can call the service impeccable so far. It's funny because this episode is so different to other ones because usually the owners just try and be as nice as possible to him before like he eats just to kind of soften the blow when he actually tears the food apart but not Abby and I kind of respect her for it she's just putting the walls up the turrets out straight away she's just trying to throw as many bullets at him before he tries this if you're gonna sit there and start bullshitting I'm me, not sitting I'm standing I'm gonna go for your balls big time wow I don't know where you're coming from 
I really don't know where you come from. I, think, I me... absolutely think you're fucking full of shit. Wow, what a welcoming. I didn't know they did female cage fighters. A little sly coming from Gordon there. That's the fight I want to see on the next UFC. Gordon then meets one of the waiters called Josh. And the one thing I proper respect about Gordon is no matter like how awful he is to the owners or I don't know, like the, the chefs in the restaurant, he's always so kind to the servant staff. And I love that. As long as they're like respectable to him. I know this is such like a basic human trait that you should have, but so many people don't have it. And it's just nice that someone like this high up in the restaurant industry still treats waiting staff with respect because he knows that they're just here to help. Like they have no impact on how good the food is. They're literally just trying to make a living. Calamari. Crispy rings with hot sweet pepper sauce. Yeah, I'll go for some of that. Okay. You don't spell peppers like that either. No, I guess you don't. It's like, is this how you spell peppers in America? Three P, because it's B-E-P-P. -P. Yeah. There's three P's in it. There it is. Wait, Abby actually thinks that's how you spell peppers. Remind me to never play a Scrabble at her house. She would be bloody useless at Countdown. I'll have a consonant in Carol, and a consonant, in, and another consonant, in, and a consonant in Carol, and another consonant. <laughs> Gordon then meets the head waiter and tries the food, and this segment is just hilarious. Well, this is the crispy calamari, and um, why does it look so wet? Uh, it's a uh, sauce that they've tossed. In. All the crispy batter is just coming off. You know, it's not everybody's cup of tea. It's not mine. Yeah, it certainly is not mine either. You know the food's terrible when even the waiter's laughing at it. Don't ask me. I just fucking give you it. He knows what's coming. It's not good. What do you think? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, look at that there. So yeah, the entire time Gordon is trying all these meals, the waiter is literally just pissing himself, which is hilarious. And as usual with these episodes, Gordon hates everything that was served to him. Soggy, chewy, disgusting calamari. It looks dreadful. It wasn't a part in my mouth. It was like a funeral in my mouth. Abby then gets really stressed and tells the team to serve Gordon their award-winning meatloaf, just to try and salvage some positivity in this situation. And this is the um, oh, yeah. award winning the award winning meatball. Yeah, I'm excited. That's disgusting. Sort of lukewarm, solidified chunks of crap. Is that award winning? Who give it that title? Throughout this episode, I've checked. It's never like revealed to give this the award winning title. I think it's just self claim. I'm wondering if like Abby had a tasting contest in her back garden and that was just the least disgusting meal, so they just give that the award. Like, is it really a competition if you're the only one competing? Gordon then calls for a team meeting. The food was shocking. Hello, part disgusting, dated shit. Who is the head chef here? There's no bullshit, just far. Doesn't care whose feelings he has. Hurts. This man would literally turn up at the Last Supper and call Jesus' bread stale. I don't care if it's your buddy Jesus. It's dry as psoriasis, man. As you've just saw, Gordon then quizzes the entire team about who's the head chef. And then Abby reveals that there's not actually a head chef. I don't know what they're doing here, running some sort of, like, communist kitchen. Abby then reveals that she actually sacked the head chef. I wonder why. And it's meant to be this guy, Jimmy, but she hasn't actually given the title of head chef yet because he hasn't proved himself to be a head chef, which I find weird because how can you prove that you're capable of being a head chef without acting like the head chef? That just doesn't make any sense. And Gordon takes this news especially well. Abby, what you're employing is a ship with no captain at the helm and the team desperate for guidance. No guidance is no standards. And then Abby reveals that the entire menu was created by herself, even though she has no cooking experience and knows nothing about preparing meals. In turn, Gordon, because of this, go back and forth in an argument because she still believes the food is a 10 out of 10. You have no cooking background but you'd put the menu together. I don't know what to say. Fix it. Wake up and admit it's shit! So what do I do? Like, just get out of the restaurant business? Then obviously my 33 years in the business is, like, worthless and I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. At this point, I think it's, like, really easy to call, like, Abby, like, you know, a nightmare and awful, but I kind of can see it from her point of view. Like she just said, she's worked in this industry for, like, 33 years. And imagine you've worked at something really hard and then someone one day just comes in and tells you that you know nothing about your job. Like, that's gotta hurt inside that's gotta you know that's gonna make you feel a certain way so i do actually sympathize with her and i do think that she has a right to be angry however the way that she like deals with it is always terrible she always gets really defensive rather than like learning from her mistakes and i think this is the reason well i know this is the reason why the restaurant is failing gordon then storms out of the restaurant and abby decides to have a team meeting with everybody that she values in the restaurant after chef ramsay's harsh critique abby has a conversation with the one person she believes is always right. Herself. <laughs> Can you imagine being a 
customer just walking into the restaurant ready to eat a meal and you just see the owner having a crisis like this at the front desk. This isn't the appetizer they want, love. Get up! This woman doesn't need Gordon Ramsay. She needs a therapist. She doesn't need HelloFresh. She needs better help. I think I'm going to open up that hot dog stand down the beach. Want some tea or something? No. I love that her response to dealing with a failing restaurant is to open another one because that's the only option here. What person in their right mind is going to watch the show and go, I need to check out her hot dog stand. And during this, she's like slagging Gordon off again, saying he's full of shit. Again, I don't know how much shit can Gordon be full of? He's completely full of shit. Like seriously, our meatloaf is like what put us on the map. Yeah, if there's one person who doesn't know about a restaurant, it's Gordon Ramsay. She also says that the meatloaf is in fact gorgeous. And this is where I think for the first time ever, one of the waiting staff stands up to her. I don't like the meatloaf. You really don't? I honestly don't. We had it the other night together. What didn't you like about it? I think our food is mediocre. Mini, me, seriously. You're telling me now you don't like it? Go on, get out. I love how they're like moving in packs. Like one person says something and they're all like, go on, get out. Your meatloaf is shit, love. This is fantastic. This is the beef I want. I don't know if there is beef in the meatloaf, but we're getting some here. Of course, Abby takes this criticism horrendously and storms off. You're just hitting me with this now. Do you know what we're up against if we even opened our mouth about the menu once? Every time we open our mouth, fuck off, fuck you. You don't know anything. Oh, you're no. so full of shit. No, 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 no. You're so full of shit. Talk to us. No. Abby, how is everybody full of shit? You're in all of your stories. Maybe you're the one with poop in your mouth, love. You're the only constant variable in this experiment. Just quickly, I want to stop this video to say that 76.1% of you are not subscribed to the channel. Press subscribe now because we're trying to hit 300k and if everyone watching this subscribed, we'd hit it. That would be mental. And let's get back to the video. It's now time for the first dinner service that Gordon will oversee. And the first thing on the agenda is he wants to check out where they store the food. And I want to warn you, this is absolutely disgusting. With the kitchen in disarray, Chef Ramsay goes on the hunt to find out what is lurking below. Oh my god. Look at that. Lamb bones. Just dumped in there like that. Chicken carcasses. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they keeping that in a fucking Asda carrier bag, man? He then calls Abby and Rico down and confronts them about it. Have you any idea what's in what box? Uh, what goes where? What, you lost the words? The place is a filthy mess. Abby and Gordon then have their biggest bust up yet after he confronted her about the food storage. You're being a fucking asshole. This wasn't like this. Hold on, it wasn't like this. You're calling me a fucking asshole? I am. You stuck up precious little bitch. Fuck hey, you. you'll walk out again. I am. That's your attitude and that's your partner. I love that Rico's like, like, oh, I just can't be arsed. They're like complete polar opposites. You're <laughs> fucking, fucking insane. That refrigerator was not like that before you got here. You're in denial. What do you think Gordon's just went in and made it like that? It's like some sort of prank. Guys, guys, bring the camera in here. I'm gonna put the cooked pork next to the raw chicken. Move over, Barney and the ninjas. There's a new prank patrol in town. That would be the worst prank ever. Why don't you get the fuck out of my room? Want to go? I would love you to go. You are so okay. in denial. Okay. You need therapy. You're a disgrace to the industry. What do you mean you're a disgrace to the industry? Industry. This man is literally the industry. She literally admitted to Gordon at the start of the episode that she can't cook anything herself. Surely that would make you a disgrace to the industry. All he wants to do is try and help save your restaurant. And you're making this impossible for him. This is like one of the first times that I ever see like Gordon just evacuate the building before he does something that he regrets. Are you still here? Not now, guys. Please, please, please. Fuck him. Again, I think it is important to just kind of like consider both sides of like the mental health here. Like this must be so tough for Abby because uh, her life is literally being turned upside down now. She's went from never getting anyone saying any opinions back to her to now every single negative opinion is directed towards her. Like this must be mental torture for her. And I think that's why she's just being so defensive and emotional. And even Gordon was going over the top. Like he was like saying she needs therapy and everything. Like he was going personal. You can tell that she's really got under his skin. And that's why I think this is one of the best episodes ever because it's like completely just off script. And honestly, I don't know if this restaurant can be turned around. But yeah, Gordon takes some time outside the restaurant to just think and then Rico goes outside. And this actually shows the difference between Rico and Abby because Rico's a lot more like logical with it. And he goes outside and says, look, Gordon, I'm gonna back you. Whatever you wanna try, I'm with you. Let's go in and just speak to Abby. And I imagine Gordon like proper appreciated that because he was probably at his wits end with this restaurant. 
restaurant. Like I always wonder with some restaurants, if it's like too much, do they just stop filming and then they just never air the episode? Because I feel like this would have happened here if it wasn't for this moment where Rico goes outside. Do you want me to leave? I'm out of here. Absolutely not. Okay, I need your help. Yeah, my 100% support. So then Gordon returns inside and they both have a meeting with Abby. And Abby actually responds surprisingly really well to this. Okay, let's agree on something. Today's been a shit day. I'm not here to rub your face in it. But Abby, I've had failure in my life. Don't worry, Gordon. We know. We've watched Hotel Hell. Not the greatest. But one thing I'm not in is denial. And when I do make a mistake, I admit it. I can't rebuild on BS. I agree. I think Abby really appreciates this because I just don't think she responds well to, like, someone shouting at her. But Gordon's, like, went, look, I've failed as well. Like, he's kind of relating to her on that note. And I think she really gets on board with that. Because she sees Gordon as a person now rather than this evil spawn of Satan. The staff then open up to Abby and tell her how much they love her and they just want to make it work for her. And this part of the show is where there's a real vibe switch and everyone's now on board. Before, everyone hated each other and now they're all kind of pushing in the right direction. Whether that's going to work or not, we'll have to wait and see. Since I bought this restaurant, I became a defensive bitch. We want to see you succeed and the answer I've gotten from you in the past is, fuck you, that's not true. We just got to talk more instead of me yelling and screaming. You can't just be my show. It's not the Abby show. It's the Down City show. Gordon then gets rid of the original big menu and makes a small menu with new recipes for the chefs to cook. To which the chefs seem much happier about. Everyone's excited and we can't have another night like the previous few. Happy? Happy. Makes it a lot more simple. And the dinner service starts really well. Like they're absolutely smashing it. Like everything's going out on time. The food's great. However, towards the middle part, everything starts to fall apart again. As Jimmy gets really overwhelmed with how many orders are coming in. Jimmy's doing all three sections. He's covering the grill. He's covering the salmon. He's covering the chicken. He's trying to run the kitchen at the same time. He's got nothing behind him. And just watching this, like I would never want to be a chef. Like if you're a chef watching this, I have so much respect for you. Like how do you deal with that much stress? No wonder you all smoke. No wonder Gordon Ramsay's got like 10 tram lines on his forehead. Jimmy doesn't have any excuses anymore. We give him a smaller menu to do and they still can't turn it out. I need one chicken up on the line right now. There you go, Abby. There's a chicken on the line for you. <laughs> That's terrible. I hate myself. And because Jimmy's getting stressed and overwhelmed, no food's leaving the kitchen and customers actually start to leave. Oh, we've been here since 6.30 and it's already 25 up. We still don't have our lunch. I know. It's not here within like the next five minutes. I'm probably like still the service then ends and Jimmy gets taken out the back of the restaurant to get shot. I'm joking. He gets a good dusting down by both Rico and Abby. And then Gordon decides that they need help in the kitchen. So he brings one of his own chefs from one of his other restaurants, Chef James, to come and help for the next night. The show then goes straight to the next day and there's a brand new menu prepared by this new Chef James. And the entire waiting staff try it. They absolutely love it. Even Abby cries. Oh my God. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> She's literally in tears. I feel so sorry for these people. They've been used to lukewarm meatloaf. Now they've got caviar and shit. I tell you who the real winner is here. The staff's bowel movements. They're rejoicing right now. These people are gonna go home and have their first solid poop for years. For years, I tell you. But yeah, this is nice to say. This is like the first time we've so happy. Actually, genuinely happy in this episode. But it's now time for the most important night in Down City's history. And I have to tell you, what is about to come is the best part of this episode. It's so wild. Gordon invites a local food blogger to come to the restaurant to try the food. Stacy Place ripped apart her last meal at the restaurant. I'm sorry, okay, but if she'd been to my restaurant before and ripped it apart, I am getting my own back on her. No matter what she orders, I'll make it perfect, but I'm spitting in it. I'm, uh, just a little bit. She might not be able to see it. Hopefully she won't, but I'm spitting in it. Just so I know that I got my own back. Is that a character flaw? Maybe, but it's needed. That meatloaf is going to be infused with spit. Also, the term food blogger is just hilarious. Like, I want to be a food blogger. Like, I eat food. I can rate food. Why can't I be that? To be fair, I guess that's just what I do with TV shows. Am I a TV show blogger? Is that what I'm gonna have to tell my mum and dad now? I'm gonna have to put that on a mortgage slip one day. Yeah, I actually am a TV show blogger. So, I'll have the biggest loan possible, please. If you could please comment down below, Cam is my favourite TV show blogger. That would actually really make my day. Chef Ramsay convinced her to give it another try. She has 10,000 followers. She vlogs tomorrow. We're 10,000. potential customers. Back up. What? 10,000? 
Susan, this woman is the white KSI. I don't know what it is, by the way, about the word blog, but it really Xs out. It's because, like, whenever, like, it's Christmas and, like, you know, like, your distant family, like, ask, Oh, come, are you still doing those, uh, blogs on Tinternet? Like, yes. Yes, I am still doing my blogs. I'm still blogging myself away on the net, Nana. I've tried everything on this menu today, so if you have any questions, you feel free to ask. All right, fatty. Sorry. It's a joke. Don't know why I said it. It's his job. He was meant to try them all. Now, the service starts, and the kitchen, again, start really strong with Chef James. It makes a clear impact, like, all the food is going out on time, smashing it. However, again, it kind of goes to shit when Abby and Jimmy have a mishap in communication, and the blogger's table, of course, the blogger's table, gets messed up, and they don't know whether they've started the order or not. Uh-oh, here we go again. A repeat of last night. We're fucked. Let's focus on 37. This is the golden ticket. Calm down, Willy Wonka. Christ. Come on, Jimmy. I really want to go to the blogging factory. Also, wow, Gordon, given the influencers special treatment, I didn't think you were like that. Honestly, guys, these influencers thinking they should be put at the start of the queue with their bloody blogs. God, never catch me doing that. Inconsiderate arseholes. Look at me. We're falling behind. Come on, guys. There's nothing coming out. Me when I go to a party where everyone's gay but no one admits it. She's not blogging now, is she? What's she doing? She's definitely blogging. She's vlogging live on the table. <laughs> what? Live from the table? She's blogging, but not just blogging. Live from the bloody table. Never thought I'd see the day. Live from the table, god damn it, that is horrendous. The bloggers live from their table, guys. I need a trouble dip up on the line right now. Urgently, please. Come on, guys, I need some food on the line. Need to see some food up on this line. Did she just take a photo of Gordon without his consent there? Hashtag cancelled. I'm not listening to her food reviews, the little twat. <laughs> not my food blogger. My food blogger strictly asks for consent when taking photos. Abby. Jimmy, I need a trouble dip. Come on, guys. Abby, Abby, just blogging live from the table. I'm in tears. And an influential food blogger still has not received her appetizers. She just tweeted, waiting for appetizers, getting hungry. Wait, what's she tweeting? <laughs> She's tweeting. She's live tweeting. Like a football match. What? All right, Gary Neville, calm down. What's she saying? I wish they sent out some bread. We are hungry. Who speaks like that? This is like AI has wrote this. Like who commentates on their restaurant experience, especially live from the table? I'm telling you, the best way to do this is not hurrying up with her food. Just turn off the free Wi-Fi. If I know a food blogger from 2011's Kryptonite. It's no free Wi-Fi. Listen, Jimmy, they're already blogging that they're waiting too long for food. Let's get this food out. Urgently, please. I love how they're just completely disregarding everybody else in the restaurant because this woman's got 10,000 followers. It's like nobody else matters. It's just this woman, the white KSI, who's blogging live from the table. The blogger then receives her food and leaves her review. Abby, read that discreetly. Truffle drip, amazing, yes? Yeah. Come on. Yes! Yeah. Come on. Finally, a positive blog from this woman. What's her at? I want to follow her. It appears as though blogger Stacy Place has reached her verdict. Lamb chops with Brussels sprouts. Very good. Flavorful. Okay, great start. Not quite medium rare, but the taste is amazing. We'll take it. I'd also tell her to delete her previous tweets as well, the little twat. All in all, the food blog, I loved it, and everyone else is, like, really complimentary about the food. Like, it was a really successful night. And there's a nice moment where, like, Abby comes full circle. Like, at the start of the episode, she was calling Gordon every name under the sun, and now she's saying this. Gee, that's why I, Gordon Ramsay, are asking you for a hug, huh? Thank you so much. I absolutely love Chef Ramsay, and, uh, I'm gonna miss him when he goes. Oh, hey. Hey, that is beautiful. That is a really nice episode. Episode. So yeah, this episode ends and the one thing I always think with these episodes I'm like, well, how is that restaurant doing now? Like I can't just turn up to that. I live so far away But they actually did a follow-up episode a year later So I think we might just summarize that quickly I'm back at Down City, the scene of one of the biggest fights in the history of Kitchen Nightmares The owner Abby, wow, what a tough nut to crack <laughs> I thought he was gonna go, the owner Abby, wow, what a toss pot Yay! How are you here, my dear? You look great. Oh my god, they're matching. They're literally matching clothes. The chemistry is off the charts, Gordon. Marry this woman. There's so many people in the background, like there's not a spare seat. This restaurant is like doing unreal, which is so good to see. Since Gordon was here last, business has improved at least 30, 30%, and that's huge in this economic environment. You also meet Chef Jimmy, who's still there, so clearly the relationship is still working out really well. And the way they store the food is vastly improved for the better, which is a great thing. It's organized, it's structured, and it all looks Incredible. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Abby, I didn't think you had it in your love. You have surprised me today. That salmon is lovely. Do you mind if I do a bite of that one? Absolutely. It's so good. I love how they're still shitting themselves. They're like, oh. Like, imagine if he calls the food terrible again. What have you done? It's worse than before, man. 
was delicious. So yeah, this is definitely a success story from Kitchen Nightmares. If you would like me to make another video on another episode, let me know in the comments down below. Also, I've done a video of Gordon Ramsay's most explosive moment on my Reacts channel. Click here if you want to watch it. Or if you want to watch me react or break down another TV show, click right here. No.